The laws of work codified at the Hague Conference of 1899 and 1907. A series of conventions were adapted at these conferences concerning land and naval warfare, which still formed the basis of the existing rules. It was emphasized that belligerents remained subject to the law of nations and the use of force against undefended villages and towns were forbidden. It defined those entitled to belligerent status and dealt with the measures to be taken as regards occupied territory. There were also provisions concerning the rights and duties of neutral states and persons in case of war and an emphatic provision on the employment of arms, projectiles or material calculated to cause unnecessary sufferings. However, there were inadequate means to implement and enforce such rules, with the result that must appear to depend on the reciprocal behavior, public opinion, and the exigencies of morals. A number of conventions in the interwar period dealt with rules concerning the wounded and sick in armies in the field and prisoners of war. Hague Convention of 1899. The Peace Conference was proposed on 24th August 1898 by Russian Jair Nicholas II. Nicholas and Count Mikhail Nikolaevich Murevoy, his foreign minister, were instrumental in initiating the conference. The conference opened on 18 May. 1899, the Jaz the treaties, declarations, and the final act of the conference were signed on 29 July 1899 and they entered into force on 4th September 1900. What is referred to as Hague Convention of 1899 consisted of three main treaties and three additional declarations. Number 1. Convention for the Pacific Settlement of International Disputes This convention included the creation of the Permanent Code of Arbitration, which exists to this day. The section was ratified by all major powers, including United States, Great Britain, Austria, Hungary, Germany, France, Italy, Spain, Russia, Japan, and China. Number two, Convention with respect to the laws and customs of war on land. This voluminous convention contains the laws to be used in all wars on land between signatories. It specifies the treatment of prisoners of war included the provisions of the Geneva Conventions of 1864 for the treatment of the wounded and forbids the use of prisons, the killing of enemy combatants who have surrendered, looting of a town or place, and the attack or bombardment of undefended towns or habitations. Inhabitants of the occupied territories may not be forced into military services against their own country and collective punishment is forbidden. This section was ratified by all major powers mentioned above. Number 3. Convention for the Adaptation to the Maritime Warfare of the Principles of the Geneva Conventions of 22nd August 1864. This Convention provides for the protection of marked hospital ship and requires them to treat the wounded and shipwrecked sailors of all belligerent parties. It too was ratified by all major powers. 4. One, declaration concerning the prohibition of the discharge of projectiles and explosives from balloons or by other new analogous matter. This declaration provides that for a period of five years, in any war between signatory powers, no projectiles or explosives would be launched from balloons. 
or by other new methods of assimilation. The declaration was ratified by all the major powers mentioned above except Great Britain and the United States. 4.2. Declaration concerning the prohibition of the use of projectiles with the sole object of spread excreating poisonous gases. This declaration states that in any war between signatory powers, the parties would abstain from using projectiles, the sole object of which is the diffusion of asphyxiating or deteriorous gases. The declaration was ratified by all major powers except the United States. 4.3. Declaration concerning the prohibition of the use of bullets which can easily expand or change their form inside the human body such as bullet with a hard covering which doesn't completely cover the core or containing indentations. This declaration states that in any war between signatory powers, the parties would abstain from using bullets which expand or flatten easily in the human body. The declaration was ratified by all major powers except the United States. Hague Convention of 1907 The second conference in 1907 was generally a failure with few major advancement from 1899 convention. However, the meeting of major powers didn't prefigure later 20th century attempts at international cooperation. The second conference was called at the suggestions of the U.S. President Theodore Roosevelt in 1904, but it was postponed because of the war between Russia and Japan. The second peace conference was held from 15th June to 18th October 1907. The intent of the conference was to expand upon 1899 Hague Convention by modifying some parts and adding new topics. In particular, in the 1907 conference had an increased focus on naval warfare. The British attempted to secure limitation of armaments, but these efforts were defeated by the other powers led by Germany, which feared the British attempt to stop the growth of the German fleet. Germany also rejected the proposals for compulsory arbitration. However, the conference did enlarge the machinery for voluntary arbitration and established conventions regulating the collection of debts, rules of war, and the rights and obligations of neutrals. The treaties, declarations, and the final act of the second conference were signed on 18th October 1907. They entered into force on 26 January 1910. The 1907 convention consists of 13 treaties, of which 12 were ratified and entered into force and one declaration. Number 1. Convention for the Pacific Settlement of International Disputes This convention confirms and expands on Convention 1 of 1899. As of 2013, this convention is in force for 105 states and 115 states have ratified one or both of the 1907 Convention 1 and the 1899 Convention 1, which together are the founding documents of the Permanent Code of Arbitration. Number 2. Convention respecting the limitation of the employment of force for recovery of contract debts. Number 3. Convention relative to the opening of hostilities. This convention sets out the accepted procedure for a state making a declaration of war. 4. Convention respecting the laws and customs of war on land. This convention confirms with minor modifications the provisions of Convention 2 of 1899, all major powers ratified it. 5. Convention 
relative to the rights and duties of neutral powers and persons in case of war on land. Number 6. Convention relative to the legal position of enemy merchant ships at the start of hostilities. 7. Convention relative to the conversion of merchant ships into warships. 8. Convention relative to the laying of automatic submarine contract mines. 9. Convention concerning bombardment by naval forces in time of war. 10. Convention for adaptation to maritime warfare of the principles of Geneva Conventions of 6 July 1906. This convention updated Convention 3 of 1899 to reflect the amendments that had been made to the 1864 Geneva Conventions. Convention 10 was ratified by all major states except the United Kingdom. 11. Convention relative to certain restrictions with regard to the exercise of right of capture in naval war. 12. Convention relative to the establishment of International Prize Code. This convention would have established the International Prize Code for the resolution of conflicting claims relating to captured ships during wartime. It is the one convention that never came into force. It was ratified only by Nicaragua. 13. Convention concerning the rights and duties of neutral powers in naval war. 14. Declaration prohibiting the discharge of projectiles and explosives from balloons. This declaration extended the provisions of Declaration 4 1 of 1899 to the close of the planned the Third Peace Conference, which never took place. Among the major powers, this was ratified only by China, United Kingdom, and the United States. Hague One established the Permanent Code of Arbitration (PCA), also known as the Hague Tribunal. The PCA remains operative in dispute resolution between states, private parties, and intergovernmental organizations, and sits at the juncture between public and private international law. The Hague II expanded on the labor code and introduced principles governing the treatment of prisoners of war the law of occupation and prohibited certain specified battle tactics such as the use of poisoned weapons, treacherous killing or wounding, and the employing arms, projectiles or material of a nature to cause superfluous injury. Other Hague Conventions such as the Hague 4 of 1907 and the Hague 13 of 1907 expanded the Hague Number two's prohibition on the methods and means of conducting hostilities. The preamble to the Hague II contains perhaps one of the most significant aspects of Hague law known as the Martin's Clause. The Martin's Clause was inserted into the preamble on the instigation of Professor Fedor Fedorovic Martins, Russian delegate to the 1899 Peace Conference. These Geneva Conventions and the 1977 Protocols both restate the Martin's Clause. It was inserted as a substantive provision into Additional Protocol No. 1. Martin's Clause The Martin's Clause remains ambiguous and open to different interpretation. The three broad interpretations of the clauses are, firstly, that the laws or the principles of humanity and dictated of public conscience mentioned in the clause relate to the interpretation of the application of existing treaty and customary rules of international law. According to this interpretation, the clause serves as a reminder that Customary international law continues to apply after the adoption of treaty. 
It also means that since treaties regarding the law of warfare cannot cover the entire scope of warfare, something that is not expressly stated as prohibited is not ipso facto permitted. The second interpretation is that the clause operates to expand the source of customary international law beyond state practice to include sources which evidence the laws of humanity and the requirement of public conscience, such that conduct in warfare as well as being subject to treaties and customary international law is also subject to the principles of humanity and the requirements of public conscience. According to the third interpretation, the principles of international law but doesn't create new source of law. Discussions of the clause in the advisory opinion of ICJ on the legality of the threat or use of nuclear weapons didn't answer the question of interpretation. The differing opinions of judges and the states in the advisory opinion reflect the divide and in international law between positive and neutral law. The Martins Clause has been said to represent an objective means of establishing the content of neutral qua moral law via the dictates of public conscience, which may be established by various sources evidencing the content of public conscience. The significance of the Martin Clause is then that for the first time it placed a positive sheen on the moral and neutral law component of international law. The principles of humanity have been interpreted as prohibiting the means and methods of warfare not necessary for the attainment of the definite military objectives, which international humanitarian law scholar Jean Pictet states that humanity insists that capture is preferable to wounding an enemy and wounding him better than killing him, that non-combatants be spared as far as possible so that the injured can be treated and cured, that the wounds cause the least possible pain, that capacity be made as endurable as possible. Conclusion Many of the principles of the Martin Conventions and Declarations relating to the means and methods of warfare have been recodified as part of the 1977 additional protocols. But in addition to these general principles, which apply across the board to all methods and means of warfare, there are a number of treaties that apply to specific weapons or methods of combat, such as the 1980 UN Convention or Conventional Weapons, regulating in particular, the use of landmines, incendiary weapons, and binding laser weapons, and the 1997 Ottawa Convention on the Prohibition of Anti-Personnel Mines. The Hague Regulations annexed to the Hague Convention respecting the laws and customs of war on land of 1899 and 1907 outlined duties and responsibilities of an occupying power in occupied territory. Although Geneva Convention 4 also contains rules relating to the law of occupation and treatment of civilian under occupation, Article 154 of the Geneva Convention 4 states that in relation to occupying power who are bound by the Hague Conventions, the provisions of the Geneva Convention 4 shall be supplementary to Section 1 and Section 2 of the Hague Regulations. The rules of the Hague regulations therefore remain relevant in setting out the duties of occupying powers.